My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. You're listening to Best Quality Vacuum, the Duck Feed show examining the extended Vince Gilliverse. Yeah. And this week we are breaking stuff. Yeah. Give me something to break. Mm-hmm. Let the bodies hit the floor. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one knows what it's like to be, yeah. a, to be a sad man. To be the sad man. Yeah. Uh, this we're talking about sad men in uh, an episode <laughs> about sad men uh, 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 here in a series about sad men. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the, the in an extended universe about sad men. Um, we're talking about sad men uh, yeah. here with breakage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this this episode was written by uh, Moira Wally Beckett and directed by Johan Renk. And it originally aired on April 5th of 2009. Yeah. Uh, and this is kind of a companion to the last episode to get us back into a meth cooking status quo. Yeah. You know, the last episode was showing uh, kind of mental problems that our, our heroes, quote unquote, were facing. Now it's showing their economic needs. Yeah. Uh, their money's run out. Mm-hmm. They got to get back to uh, to cooking. Yeah. And uh, but however, they have a big Tuco shaped hole in their heart uh, <laughs> and they, uh, they have to figure out how to do this, which is a great question. A very um, good like, question. Yeah, like if I just, I was just thinking about this, like, Oh, I had $60,000 worth of meth. <laughs> what then? <laughs> you know, I don't fucking know. <laughs> just turn myself in. I, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> just mail it out to strangers. Like I got yeah, no idea. Just free samples, like put some neighborhood association stuff. I, I don't know what I would do with the meth. If, if you build, if you build it, they will come. Just sit, sit in front of the mirror, gripping the sink, going scante, <laughs> scante, until it sounded natural. You know, and I could, <laughs> I could sell it. Yep. Glass, glass, <laughs> glass, <laughs> yeah. glass, blue sky glass, scante. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know what they do, and I, I sympathize with this problem. Yeah, that, they, that they're and, having, you know, and this is the this is what they spent the back half of the previous season trying to solve. And yep. the thing about the show, solutions turn into problems immediately. Bigger problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this also, I have a lot of affection for this episode because this is the turning point that turns Hank into like a real character. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things we talked about before, like one of the things I respect about this show, is that it treats things that could be props as characters. Right. Um, you know, this is the beginning of Hank's PTSD arc. Uh, he's going to get a promotion to this tri-state border task force. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's having problems because he was in a shootout. Yeah. You know, and it's not uh, it's not guilt. It's just you were in a shootout. Yeah. You know, this is one of the themes of the show um, that is across the entire cast is that violence makes a victim of the doer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the exception of a few very clear psychopaths or people who have <laughs> killed a big part of themselves. Yes. And the, the one way that kind of conceptualize the arc of the show is Walt killing that part of himself. Mm-hmm. Right. Like slowly over time, like he feels guilt about these initial deaths. Yeah. Quite a bit. Uh, and then he doesn't. Um, you know, he doesn't get to that point. Hank was supposed to already be at that point because he's a DEA Superman. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, instead, uh, he's not invincible or bulletproof. No, no. Stuff. Despite what everybody else around him is saying. And that is an interesting version of the problem um, uh, or, you know, of one of the problems of the show, which is presenting, a, a, you know, a false self, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know, the multiple different identities that people have and the ways that they that they kind of work to hide a truth about themselves or whatever, you know, Hank is existing and, and, um, you know, above the line, like he's, he's in the street world where anybody and everybody is calling him a hero and is calling him a Superman and yes. trying to navigate that. Well, you know, categorically not being that because that person doesn't exist, uh, yeah. is, is interesting. Yeah. Well, and that irony between him and Walt, where that's kind of what Walt wants. We're going to get yes. the, uh, the first flickers of, you know, Walt watching his son admire Hank mm-hmm. for this kind of thing that he also does, <laughs> you know, and he's not, he's not picky up on the subtext. Like Hank is not better off for this. No. You know, but he's just like, I did, I did murders. <laughs> I, I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was there. I, I was also in danger. Why isn't he like me? Come on, Flynn. <laughs> um, the, uh, the podcast for this uh, has Dean Norris on it. Which is good because he it's, it's important to this episode. Um, I never want to hear another production detail again. I, I just it's hard to shoot in water. Uh huh. 
it it took a long time to come up with that cold open. Like there's just <laughs> nothing to it. And then it's in between just absolutely effusive congratulating each other nonstop, mm-hmm. um, which I don't care for. Uh, the one cute bit in the commentary is that they found out Stephen King likes their show and they all geek out. Oh, nice. Uh, and Dean Moore Norris has them all uh, do a hell yeah, like all in sync. <laughs> really <laughs> That's loud, a very and it's really Dean, sweet. <laughs> That's a very Dean Norris thing. And it's then really Dean, cute. And then uh, Dean Norris would go on to uh, to be an actor in the Under the Dome uh, yeah. series. Uh, which Probably wasn't a very, big opportunity very, for him. Wasn't very good. Well, uh, that's a Stephen King adaptations for you. Yep. You know, that's he's, the way he's, they go. he's batting about one out of 10, <laughs> you know, uh, he, he doesn't adapt very well. Nope. Uh, I would say even the biggest fan in the world would probably agree with that. Yeah. Um, the, uh, cat's eye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, not a great commentary. Uh, or yet uh, again. podcast uh, or yeah, podcast. after show podcast still, still waiting for, for the, that shoe to drop. Yes. You know, uh, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but I, yeah. the things I do for this show. <laughs> yeah. yep. The one, the one little bit is they did talk about uh Schrader brow, uh, specifically getting the rights to a song. So there's a, a cute little, there's little jingle. He, sir, he sings mm-hmm. in this, um, that is an altered version of the low and brow jingle. They were not sure if they were going to be able to get that. So he also made up a royalty free. Okay. Uh, jingle inspired, both of which by... are used. Uh, no, just inspired by humming to himself. Yes. You know, no, no, uh, I was just going to say, and you know, we couldn't get the rights to low and brow, uh, low and brow song. So we made one of those inspired by the low. Yeah. And they made, they made a kind of, and they kind of melded them. Yes. Uh, together. And it's, it's a cute little bit. It's a cute scene in the show mm-hmm. and it is a cute uh, little story. And the other little like cute story from that is originally they were going to have him make the jaws noise as he came out uh, from getting his promotion. Okay. They kind of stunt on his friends, and then they the, they stop the writer and being like, "Yeah, those two notes cost fifty thousand dollars," <laughs> uh, which made me so mad at John Williams. Uh, yeah, that sucks so bad. Like, why can't that belong to the culture at this point? It's fucking I mean, Jaws. It, yeah, take take it as a compliment, dude. <laughs> I don't need to see Jaws because I saw the scene in which Hank Schrader did those two notes. <laughs> I'm taking money from John Williams. I'm not going to buy the sheet music of the Jaws theme yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for my family to perform in their living room because I have it. On this DVD, uh, that made me very mad. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, rights issue shit is really frustrating. That is really things should go in the public domain after like twenty years. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, shorter than it is. Uh, let's yeah. say. Yeah. Um. Uh, but but yeah, I, I I love Schrader Brow. I love his dorky little label that he made mm-hmm. for it with his big smile and face perfect. on it. Um, yeah. uh, I do like the, uh, you know, the irony, like they don't lean on this at all, but you know, DEA agent, uh, homebrew and beer. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. It's, it's a, the, they, when they first set it up, it's using the same shots for the yes. equipment. Yeah. You know, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know what the word is. a soft irony. Yeah. You know, yeah. Th- there, there's a world of difference. Like mm-hmm. beer doesn't ruin families the same way, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like all the equivalences that that Walt tries to make between meth and other drugs. Oh, absolutely. That's fruitless. Yeah. It's just, yeah. uh, it, you know, I, I guess yeah. the, it, it, it is a comparison that I find that I find cute. Yeah. yeah cute, I don't know cute that is the trying. word for it. I don't, I don't find it particularly insightful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just, it's not, it's, it's you don't got to hand it to him. Like nope. damn Walt. Good point. There is no difference <laughs> between Schrader brow and, and, and blue meth that like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Lydia implies the last season like destabilizes Czechoslovakia or whatever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, uh, it reunited the Czech Republic. Yeah. <laughs> it reunited it's, those countries and then destabilized and they fell back apart again. <laughs> yeah. It, it just, it's, it's, it's pretty night and day. And especially yeah. since this is going to lead into showing the first time in the show uh, with the next episode with Peekaboo that is really showing the human cost yeah. of, of meth. Um, mm-hmm. And with the uh, Tortuga. Thing. Mm-hmm. like they are actually showing the other side of the scale and i think it's really canny that they wait this long yeah i'm not saying that to refute your point i'm just saying it's it's not again it is cute more than thematic it's mm-hmm. it's almost like they're um like a faint y- yeah you know and like they're like hey is there really no difference between this and then bam here's the <laughs> scariest <laughs> meth witch you've ever seen in your life <laughs> and their horribly abused child yeah no no and and I, I think that's a little bit what i'm talking about too when i say like i'm happy that they don't like lean on it there's a version of the show or there is a show that would like 
you know, really hit it and then linger and say like, get it. This, yeah. the, the, this, ju- this just doesn't. No, and- it, it's also in the pile of like little tricksy things that uh, Breaking Bad likes to do, mm-hmm. which we'll talk about with the cold open. Yeah. You know, the same the with the pool implication when they find Walter's glasses and you're like, oh, no, something happened to Walt. Mm-hmm. This cold open is like, oh, no, something happened to Hank. Yes. You know, they 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 they're they're little playful little goblins <laughs> like on this show. <laughs> they're yeah. they're little editing gremlins uh, on the show. Uh, and it, yeah. it's it's uh, to me, it varies in strength. Like sometimes it's very good and cute mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, and sometimes it's insightful, you know, yeah. and sometimes it's just kind of like, OK, yeah, you know, I, I wish they hadn't done the somebody died cold open twice in a row uh yeah 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 twice in a row is especially uh, especially egregious um for a very short time in 2019 they began making and selling actual schrader brow mm-hmm. uh, with dean norris as the spokesman i love that in 2019 <laughs> I, I would love to get a bottle of it like just as a shelf candy thing uh-huh that'd be really cute did i i i had a uh i have a distressed nuka cola and sunset sarsaparilla Ooh, a uh, bottle that I got from a convention and my sunset spot sarsaparilla broke. Oh no, that's the best uh, one. Yeah. It, it fell down and, and broke and smelled real weird. Uh, <gasps> it was an amateur production. It was definitely like somebody had taken like a bottle of Coke and changed it. <laughs> um, so it, uh, it was some old Coke oh. uh, in there and it smelled, uh, Foul. off. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, not even so much bad as just like otherworldly. It was, it was <laughs> like, it didn't smell natural. It was real weird. Uh, but yeah, like I would love to have a Schrader Brow on that shelf as well. Yeah. My fakey drinks. Yeah. But uh, it's not available anymore, unfortunately. I, did, I didn't check eBay, but the actual distributor, the brewery, doesn't uh, doesn't make indoor salad anymore. But yeah. just go get a craft Kolsch around like 6% and pretend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and homebrewed beer is, uh, I've had mixed. Yeah, that's a roll. It's a roll of the dice. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, this cold open we're talking about, we have two uh, migrants, people swimming across the river uh, into, uh, so this is actually El Paso. Is it? Um, yes. The, uh, the, this is, I guess this is a production. I, I talked to you about that commentary, but it is teaching me things. Mm-hmm. Um, the, this river, the Rio Grande goes through El Paso and goes up to Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. The implication is meant to be that Hank throws the grill down and it floats down to the border. Oh, okay. Like uh-huh. he is going to float down to the border. Okay. Yeah. Um, but they, as they're crossing, they stumble across Tugo's grill cube with the implication again, that like Hank was carrying around his lucky cube and got shot or something. Yeah. He got shot by a river. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it is uh, just, you know, ooh, this this object that is important to our characters is found uh, as detritus. Yeah. What happened to that character? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's the, 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 the that's it. Uh, yeah. You know, just I think most of the budget on that went to the underwater shot stuff. Yeah. Yep. Water stuff is expensive and uh, hard to do. Yeah. Um, uh, so the actual episode proper, we open with this kind of dreamy series of close-up shots on Walt's chemo drip, um, with the big reveal being that he is sitting there alone. You know, everybody else has, you know, somebody sitting, sitting across from them. Um, uh, that's where Skylar had been before, but now it is just him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the oncologist is optimistic. This is foreshadowing, you know, when he, be, when he goes into remission. Mm-hmm. here you know this is this is good you know we're gonna check back in about two months around the time of the baby's first birth but you're gonna start feeling like yourself your hair is gonna come back like no yeah. you know he's saying these things that would be excellent news and would be cause for jumping for joy for anybody who hadn't put themselves in the situation walt did right for anybody <laughs> you know, who didn't the, act like they were going to die yeah uh he notices that skylar's gone and he's like hey you know uh any more confusion how are you and how are you and skylar doing and he's like, yeah, it's all good. We're just busy. <laughs> you know, <And> it's <laughs> we're like, so it's, busy. I just, yeah, uh, man, I can't it, get my I'm head not above working water. My, my, my like seven month pregnant wife uh, <laughs> and myself who doesn't work. We're just so goddamn busy. <sighs> can't get either man, end of this thing. These, these thing. emails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and uh, you know and and he he, he lies about it too he says no yeah. we're good we're good you yeah. know it's 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 yeah, fine just, just you know? busy it's everything's good yeah and uh, like yeah. i don't know he could probably have you like asked for some tips because families are definitely strained by dealing with oh, illness <laughs> but not the tips that this family isn't strained by illness yeah <laughs> this family is strained by <laughs> you know by Waltz, guess- you know He's a, he's, a, he's a he's a clever guy. He he could uh uh he, he could figure out a way to repurpose it. I guess what I'm I, saying is he could uh he, he you know he he could use this. 
he, uh, I think him trying to repurpose it is what he is doing when he's like, oh, you know, I, I'll try this antioxidant yeah. stew or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's nothing's working. Mm-hmm. You know, like th- this, this arc of Walt is him trying everything possible with Skylar when mm-hmm. only the truth will suffice. Yeah. And I'm also, you know, I'm not pointing out a plot hole or anything. I'm no, just saying if I was Walt. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you were Walt, you would have made some different decisions. If uh, you so, quantum leaped you. into Walt. If I, I mean, you know. you're saying this like I didn't. Got yeah, some kind no. of other kin situation going on. <laughs> the, the, um, uh, the receptionist, he goes out to get his bill and the receptionist prints out his bill, which goes on for a very long time yeah, on this printer. CVS receipt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is you know, showing how expensive it is. Walt says, you know, we discussed the cash discount. She said that that's included. I love this little beat. She says, congratulations. And he goes, thank you. <laughs> like, I love a, a thank you as a question. Uh-huh. Uh, pose, poses a question. And it's like, what is she, you know, she is either. She knows that he's the news is good or he's just gotten through the round. So he's mm-hmm. congratulation, you know, congratulating him. And he, like, I love his perspective, which is like, there's nothing to fucking congratulate me for. You just handed me like an infinity money bill. Yeah, yeah. And sent me right back into this thing I'd prefer not to do because uh, it's awful. Yeah. There are two goes about, <laughs> you know. And she gives him uh, the thing. I feel like this is just a little bit, uh, a little bit too on the nose. A little on the she, nose, yeah. Yeah. She gives him a button pin that says hope is the best medicine. And he takes it and then quick cut to him throwing it into a trash can outside. <laughs> He's th- don't get it. He's throwing away his hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the cold open where the hope is the best medicine button washes up on the shores of Belize. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun. Um, I, w- one thing I was thinking about with this is that that uh, trash can probably has a few hope is the best medicine yeah. buttons in it. If I were in this situation and somebody handed me that button, mm-hmm. I, I would be like, I appreciate this gesture, but I'm not going to wear this in a million fucking years. No, no. You know, <laughs> like, sorry, I, I guess I'll recycle this for you. Save, save this for the live, laugh, love crowd, please. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Patch Adams. <laughs> Get this on my face. Um, you know, so back home, Skyler is advocating uh, to the insurance company over Walt's hospital bill. Right. You know, really uh, well-observed questions here. Like, what is a diagnostic versus an exploratory? Mm-hmm. You know, all this shit. <laughs> it's yeah. like very good questions of medical ease. <laughs> just, just the ways that insurance companies try to become little genies. Like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> yeah, I, I hate uh, that shit. Yep. Uh, really well observed. Walt kisses her on the head and notices the smell of smoke in her hair and says, yeah. Hey, have you been smoking? You've been around somebody who smokes. Yeah. And she just kind of brushes it off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and Skylar, you know, asks like, um, will Gretchen and Elliot cover this bill? And of course she knows something is up. She's like, I know this is strictly your domain, but yeah. you know, family is not in a position to soak this $13,000, uh, alibi. Right. Yeah. It's very expensive. You know, uh, he's worrying about it. At this point, he can't sleep. He goes and counts his remaining money and he does not have enough money. Nope. He is broke. Uh, yeah. So, uh, he looks at, he looks at the gun. Um, it cuts to him throwing up in the toilet, you know, as you do on chemo, mm-hmm. um, the toilet backs up. What a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Um, you know, he plunges it and a pack of cigarettes floats to the circa surface. Yeah. Skylar, you should definitely know better than that. Yeah. That's like teenager shit. Please. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. you have a car, just go to a public park and throw it into the trash can there. Throw in the bottom of your trash can outside. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> throw it in the uh, neighbor's trash can. The lake. Yeah. There's a lot of different trash cans. <laughs> throw it over the fence. Um, the, uh, so again, fans of this, uh, Skyler smoking subplot <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> uh, Hank is sitting in the office staring at Tuco's grill and he's got kind of this, uh, pensive look on his face. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not triumphant. All of the like ma- machismo from last episode yes. is gone. Yeah. You know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cake with a horrible drawing of him is fully digested. Yes. Yeah, metaphorically and literally. Yeah. Uh, Isaac calls him, uh, and he covers the, the grill up with papers. Um, the real cute thing is like update on Tuco Salamanca still dead, super dead. <laughs> it's real cute, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, he's, you know, what is the actual news? And it's like, well, Tuco's gone. The mess supply is drying up. Yeah. Uh, but people on the street are still have this buzz about this guy named Heisenberg. Yeah. You know, just as he is a ghost and, you know, never heard of him before, but everybody's talking about him. It's like some kind of, you know, just a, a, a dr- drug legend. person, urban legend. Yeah. yeah. Someone's going to come fill this vacuum. Yeah. Uh, Asak calls Hank a great white shark. He'll go hundreds of miles for his prey. 
uh, and he promotes him to this tri-state border task force in El Paso. Yeah. Splitting his time between there, which that's a drive. (laughs) It's a real drive, you know? Uh, And, and yeah, so uh, he sell, you know, celebrates with Gomi. They're going to go have, uh, and this other dude who looks like Hank's stunt double. (laughs) <laughs> a little bit <laughs> it reminds me a lot of the the you know arguably the worst sketch and i think you should leave season two uh-huh with where he goes in the meeting and he's been followed hired that guy to follow that guy around oh <laughs> it's like there's almost no joke to it it's it's a really weird sketch yeah nobody ever remembers it uh-huh. he kind of looks like that guy to me yeah, yeah. And, and and just like his, his dialogue isn't that great either he's just kind of <laughs> like you know like oh are they selling rings where you're going you know for all your knuckle sandwiches <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> oh buddy uh just just like some kind of failed clone of an uncle <laughs> like a teleporter accident with an uncle uh <laughs> comes out in the most avuncular storyline you know in the series uh they're gonna go have uh lunch um and hank has a panic attack in yeah. the elevator um really really great performance from dean norris there's a really great little grace note like he grips the the handle before he gets out of the elevator he does a practice smile mm-hmm. it's like a really sweet like moment like you yeah. know gotta start the show <laughs> uh it's it's a uh, it's really well observed yeah so Let's... underrated actor dean norris i think yes yeah um uh it, it's good it's a very it's a very well uh well portrayed panic attack uh and yeah. he you know you can just in the performance you get you really do get the sense it is you know conveyed that this is a surprise to him like yes. he he has not gotten this before yeah. um yeah so cut over jesse has <laughs> returned to clovis's junkyard Mm-hmm. you got a lot of nerve yeah, yeah. You know, or, uh, or, or you're stupid and you know probably yeah. both he brought money for the tow and then rip you know extra for the repairs right the toilet the the gate that he blew through all that stuff you know like i said my words and my bond yep uh how much i got storage need geo how much would it cost to let me store the rv here and clovis is not taking it seriously you know a million five your sister, yeah. you know, and just, he's like, come on, man, <laughs> like, <laughs> stop fucking playing around. You got your money, no. uh, you know, 500 per week. And they kind of negotiate what's going to happen. You know, key privileges, things like that. Uh, he also needs to drive out of there. Mm-hmm. So he's tempted. He sees this nice El Camino, uh, there and he's like, man, I can't wait to drive that in my movie <laughs> uh, and looking at it, but instead he gets a beater. Yep. You know. And just a little ship box Toyota tor- uh, Tercel. Uh, yep. one of the, <laughs> it's, it's like, a it's like a less charismatic, uh, gremlin, uh, but only because, uh, it's not called a gremlin. I, I love cars that look like this yep. now that we're in the car singularity, like the Hans Zimmer, every car looks the fucking same. Yeah. Every, yeah. Every you car know? is a, yeah, it's my Kia soul, right? Yeah. yeah. Every car is a fucking Kia soul now, yep. like more, more closer to right angles in cars, please. Mm-hmm. I understand they're bad for aerodynamics, but like everything being kind of an ill-defined blob yeah. is a bummer. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, and now he's, you know, he solved his transportation problems. Now he needs to solve his living, you know, his shelter problems. So he stops by an apartment, you know, one half of a duplex looking to rent. And this is where we are introduced to, to Jane Margolis. Yes. Yeah. A uh, huge, huge character and an arc that like completes in this season. Yes. Introduced and completed in the season. Yeah. Played there. by Kristen Ritter. Yep. A uh, great performance. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I saw Kristen Ritter. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been in other stuff. She's always great when she yeah. shows up. Yeah. Um, he gets the, uh, the apartment and he's kind of talking big, you know, Oh man, I used to live in a house, but too much upkeep. <laughs> this, this is, this is way better. <laughs> he's going to do it. But Jane makes him sign paperwork, uh, which is what you do when you rent an apartment. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, he, he's like, Hey, I was hoping we do this for cash. Uh, she's like, my dad isn't a make exceptions kind of guy. I just manage the place. Mm-hmm. Um, and he explains like, basically, uh, he appeals to her in a way that he did not know would work, you know? Right. He's like, listen, I need a break. I got kicked out of my parents' house because I'm a disappointment. This shadows her, yes. you know, she is further along on the arc that he would be on if he were going to try to break good with his parents. Right. Like Jane is a really interesting foil for Jesse because they're both drug associated care people who disappointed their parents, except she is trying to walk in her parents' shoes. Yes. Like her, her father is not, uh, you know, good in mm-hmm. this. Like he's not perfect or anything, but he's slightly more patient than, than Jesse's parents. Yes. 
you know? Um, but this, this is the key to her sympathy. Mm -hmm. Like she, she's like, okay, you know, I'll make an exception. Yeah. You know, Uh, more, more per month. We're going to need an extra deposit. You know, all of this is the DBAA fee and he plays like he knows what this is, you know, but then she, you know, then she laughs and so, you know, don't be an asshole, uh, which he will repeat to, uh, to his buddies later in a very, uh, in a very funny way. He picks Uh, up, well, it's, he's, he's a perpetual student. Like he's picking mm -hmm. up, he also tells them to apply themselves, which is what Walt (laughs) tells them. Like he's, he picks up other people's terminology and stuff around Mm -hmm. him. It's really sweet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and should be remarked, the chemistry between these two is really good even right now. Yeah. Yep. You know, we just with him, you know, trying to, you know, <laughs> okay, so we need a name. And then he writes in, I'm Jesse. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> Fucked up yeah. the first part of the lie. What's the second part of the lie? Jackson. <laughs> yeah. She, she doesn't, uh, you know, well, seriously, you know, just like she knows he's using a nom de plume. Yes. Um, Hank, we cut over to Hank. He's out in his garage bottling his homebrew, uh, singing the Schrader Brown theme song, which is, again, great. It's very mm-hmm. cute. Yeah. Uh, Marie opens the door and is like, Hey, why would you call in sick? Like you just got promoted. You call in sick to play in your man cave. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, it's fine. I can take a day. You know, this stuff's classic. Remember the batch of Oh six. Yeah. Leave me alone. You know, he's putting on the, this face. Yes. Uh, there. Yeah. And you know, says, Hey, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Just can you, can you, can you go? I need to concentrate on this. Yeah. And you know, he angrily starts going back to bottling and presses down too hard on one and shatters it in his hand. Yes. Uh, a scary thing that could, uh-huh. that could probably happen because you're dealing with contents under pressure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, home brewing. We're really good at it. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun. I, I did it for a little bit. I've never yeah. had a homebrew beer that was better than a beer I could just go buy. No, it's uh, just, it's, you know. it's more for the, uh, you know, for, for me, it was just, uh, you know, something to do. It was a hobby kind of thing. Yeah. Just like, oh yeah. Yeah. I made this. It t- the, tastes, the weird, tastes a little bit too much like bananas, but I made it. it it's <laughs> the, every time I've ever had it too, I mean, part of it is uh, what I'm influenced by. Like everyone who's ever given me a homebrew beer uh, is beaming with pride and then watching my face for micro reactions yeah, yeah. to it. And I'm like, Man, <laughs> I cannot handle this kind of pressure. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm drinking you. <laughs> like <it's, laughs> this, this reflects poorly on you. Yeah. I've, I've been, You're I've been drinking lucky. Springfield. You you can you can definitely get uh, uh you know run into a homebrew person who's way too precious about it. But I uh, the people that I have spoken with about it, you know, whose home beer homebrew beer I have drank, were more just kind of like more just happy to share it than we're yeah. than looking for notes. You know, well that's the thing too is like once you do that, you got a lot of beer to to get rid of, and if you just drink it yourself, that's just an inefficient way to get drunk. Yep, like you have to share it, mm-hmm. you know, because otherwise it's it's weird art in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, but it blows up on his hand, and yeah. it looks painful. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, Walt and Jesse meet out in the desert. Um, they get suited up to cook, and Jesse is like, "What is the plan? Right. Like, we cook and then what? <laughs> you know, we can't move this product." Uh, Walt says, "Listen, I know they won't make very much money, but what if you just sold it on your own?" And he's like, "Fuck no! <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not doing that risk for a chicken scratch. Like, the DA is on me." Right. Is rightfully, you know, Jesse is a good point machine here. He's got a profile. Like this is, you know, <laughs> this is a tough spot. And Jesse says, well, I've got bills to pay now. And, you know, that's the wrong thing to say to wrong thing to say yeah. to Walt right now. And they kind of have a little piss and argument about who's in a tougher spot, you know? Yeah. And Walt says, I've got nothing to show for all of this. Nothing for my family, which you might remember was the whole damn point. All I have is the world's most expensive alibi. Right. You know, uh, they're trying to figure out what to do. You know, they like listen, we we all know we don't want to get into bed with another Tuco. Uh, you know, and we can't sell in person. Um, Jesse says there's a third option. Uh, you know, they can be the Tuco. This is a real weird failure of imagination thing. Mm-hmm. It's very strange to me that they assume that anybody who would distribute their drug would be a Tuco. Right. Like they don't think Tuco is a you know, a rare and special <laughs> snowflake. Yeah. Yeah. That there you would know? be uh that, that there might be somebody else who's a little bit more invested in their uh, own self-preservation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like tu- Tuco was, was a unique bird, you know, yeah. and they, they're not really putting that together. Uh, Jesse at this point, uh, you know, there's a little bit of early on, I feel like in the series there, they, Jesse and Walt trade some culpabilities 
Mm -hmm. back and forth like they take turns being the lead on pushing their operation forward yeah it's not just walt pressuring jesse because the jesse being a victim of walt is a narrative that surfaces a little bit slowly Mm -hmm. in the show um so i think this is an important beat having him suggest this idea and moving to this next phase that gets him in this trouble as opposed to it just being walt yes you know uh he's like i'll be tuco i'll build a network i know guys and Walt's like no i don't want to bring anybody else in like, yeah. absolutely not. Uh, Jesse says, you know, what do you mean? No. And he goes, well, okay. My vote is that this is it. We don't do this. And it's like, you don't get a vote. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like this is like, what is what, you know, this is my side of this. You mm-hmm. cook. I do the business. Right. That was the idea. Everything went wrong when you got involved. Yeah. Like you're the one who hooked us up with Tuco or push right. for that. Yeah. And Walt does an extremely rare thing, which is admit that he was in over his head. You know, well, I admit that there, I meant to something of a learning curve, which he says like, he's going to lead into like, you know, like it's mitigating something, but Jesse doesn't let that happen. It says, you know, we do this my way now, you know, you, you need me (laughs) more than I, than I need you, Walt. Uh, And it's very striking that he calls him Walt and not Mr. uh, Mr. White. It only happens twice in the series Mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen again until the fifth season. Yeah. That he calls him Walt. Like it's, it's a, a very uh, power move. This is Jesse uh, having a little bit of his groove back. Yes. You know, like uh, he was at his lowest point, but now he's got a place, you know, he's, he's feeling a little bit better. Yeah. He can make Good better, make better moves when he's on firmer ground. Yeah. Uh, he has a little business meeting. He <laughs> puts some pretzels uh, and some like present, some big K soda uh in in a thing uh for his business meeting for combo skinny pete and badger to show the guy, up the guys that he knows i love these i love this crew i, I just love no no i can solve this problem let me blow this concord and summon the dipshit yeah. brigade brigade <laughs> bro Get, get all four of these guys to voice the Ninja Turtles. Oh, fuck. Like, it's kind of perfect. Like, yeah. it, it, it's a good crew. <laughs> you know, we're a fighting game with them. They all have very distinctive silhouettes. Oh, they do. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know, man. Like, you, you could do a really good beat em up with this crew. <laughs> like, it's so good. Uh, yeah, I, I love them. Uh, I love I love pure hearted combo. Part of it is me knowing what happens to combo, but he's so sweet. Uh huh. All this good old combo. <laughs> he just loves combos and they call him combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really cute. Like, yeah, he stole his mom's RV. Okay. Well, yeah, but yeah, we don't find that out for a long time. Oh, uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, but the, like, just, he, he invites them in and gives them this virtual tour of the living room, you know, pointing out like, yeah, we're going to do like, it's going to be real Asian min- minimalist style. It's very feng shui, yo. It's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Like we're going to get like a fountain thing here. Like this is a very, this is funny. Uh, yeah. Jokes. And, uh, the, the argument about the, about which kind of TVs are better, you know, and then Badger's like, I'm waiting for 3D TVs because of the porn. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, it, like reaching and grouping tatas. the air in front of him. It's, yeah. Just having a uh, tatas in your face. Mm-hmm. The um, real 3D porn, not that exciting. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, VR, yeah. not that great either. Yeah, it's you expect it to be, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, it just it's just weird. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, it, I it doesn't. For it. It, it, it does. You know, there's no reality to it because 3D cameras don't work that way. Yeah. Once again, I, I prefer the artifice. Yeah. Um, he does his, his pitch for them. Like, I'm gonna get you guys meth. You guys are gonna deal. $2,500 of meth fronted you. I get 2000 back. You get 500, no cutting it. Uh, no fucking around. Yeah. You know, um, they're like, that's a little steep. They're like, no, 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 no one's selling. Like he's done his research. He is a mm-hmm. good businessman. Yes. You know, no one else is selling. This is the best stuff. We have the best product. You know, when he talks about wanting to go to business school, this is shades of like stringer bell and the wire. Yes. Like, you know, this is the business side of methamphetamines and, mm-hmm. and drug dealing. Like there is a business element to it. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got a, he's got a knack. Yep. He's good at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, he's like, listen, we have as much meth as you could do. We're going to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. If you move it quick, you know, there's always, there's always going to be more apply yourself. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Like, Yeah. It's very sweet. It's like a kid putting on his, his dad's suit. (laughs) Yep. You know? (laughs) Yeah. Oh man. But he's got his crew, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. so Walt and the family, they arrive at Hank's for a party to celebrate the, uh, the promotion, you know, and Walt, you know, checks Skylar's a- ashtray, uh, in the, in the car, 
uh, for when, you know, before they get out or after, or when, whenever everybody gets out. Um, yeah. And Mar- Marie, you know, is <laughs> raining on the parade because she doesn't like El Paso. She, she wants a, a promotion directly to DC because of the culture. Yeah. Uh, you know, and t- talking about uh, El Paso, yeah. Uh, as being, uh, you know, scary and there being, um, you know, cartel yeah. stuff going on there. And th- they talk about that a little bit in the, uh, the commentary as well, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and you do not have to hand it in the cartel, like uh, just yeah. because it, it's a bunch of, you know, white folks being scared mm-hmm. of, of Mexican people. They are scared of a drug cartel that does do pretty horrific murders. Yes. You yeah. know, IRL. Even if it's not the country hide, the countryside being scattered with human heads in the way that Marie characterizes yeah, she, it. Yeah, they just decorate it with human heads. Like, yeah. that's not true. But also, you have a greater than average chance of stumbling across a human head. Yeah. Which never happens to me in real life. And it's uh, it would be a real shock to the system. Like, I want to keep that percentage as close to zero. Yeah, yeah. As I can. I want to minim- yeah. minimize the number of dead bodies that I've seen. I've already yeah. broken the seal on that one, but you know. Yeah, it's not great. You know, it, it's not like you got a 10 out of 10 would do again. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck that shit. Uh, they go back inside. Uh, Marie is going on about how she wants to move to DC and Skylar shushes her, which I love. <laughs> just, just puts her finger on her yeah. mouth. Just, yeah. you know. And uh, demands she apologize. And Marie, the balls on Marie. Yeah. For? <laughs> yeah. And just, uh, you know, uh, did you really think it was going to go away? Marie says, well, it wouldn't have if you didn't have tried to return it. Mm-hmm. And Skylar is crying. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Marie, again, why are you punishing me? That is a classic shithead thing to say. Yes. You know, this is a punishment to me. And she basically says, like, you have to respect me enough to apologize. I need my sister back. Yeah. You know, I, and, I am fucking alone in this. And there's you know? an agonizing pause before Marie yeah. finally breaks. Yep. Uh, good, good scene. Good performances from both of them. And the last we're going to hear the shoplifting. Yeah. Uh, and, until <laughs> until Marie starts stealing stuff again in s- season four, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or and and when uh, uh, Saul Goodman starts taking figurines. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know what this is, like, obsession is with absolutely the pettiest theft that's ever been in this show. <laughs> but, that, but that's a real good episode with no, Charlie's uncle. Episode. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great episode. It's just uh, uh, very funny. They love just somebody pocketing something and treating it like it's the most important thing in the world. Uh, Hank is cleaning the grill uh, and Flynn is pumping him for information about it. You know, he's like, tell me more. Like you wouldn't want that. It'll keep you up at night. Yeah. You know, uh, Walt says, keep, you know, to leave him alone. And Hank goes, no, no, it's all right. Yeah. You know, uh, and they kind of explain it. Uh, you know, he's like, listen, this is what you do. If, if a cockroach comes out of the fridge, you don't think about it. You just stomp on it. Yeah. And uh, I love Walt being like, where do these criminals come from? Like, why do they do what they do? Mm-hmm. You know, and he's like, buddy, you might as well be asking about the roaches. Like it, he's saying Hank is wrong here. Like you cannot know why somebody gets into drugs. Right. You can like not yeah. every, you know, we're just, I, I stand by what I said, just a second. You don't have to hand it to the cartels, mm-hmm. but people do get into drugs for reasons that are not as dramatically satisfying as what Walt did, mm-hmm. you know, but are still nonetheless on a spectrum of validity. Yeah. Right. Like somebody might get into drugs. It is the only option that they have. Like mm-hmm. it's the culture they were raised in. There, there are ways, there are degrees of blame. Yes. You know, they're not inhuman. Right. They, they have motivations. Yeah. And they're, such. they're shaped by the systems around them. Right. Yeah. And th- that's what Walt's speaking to. And Hank just shuts him down. Yeah. You know, gotta be rough on, on Walt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we get a, uh, a dealing montage. Uh, this one, yes. it's, you know, pretty rough. We're seeing the, we're seeing the folks, um, yeah. love that this is set to the peanut vendor. <laughs> mm-hmm. A uh, wide variety of folks mm-hmm. here, which I like quite a bit. Yeah. You know, skinheads, weird pet store employee with an ale, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, until skinny Pete deals to this, uh, woman in an alley who tricks him. Yes. She says she runs back to the alley saying the cops are after them and they hold him up. Uh, this lady, uh, like, so it's never good st- good look to like comment on a lady's appearance. She mm-hmm. is designed to be monstrous. Yes. It's played. This. It's It's like with Wendy. 
um, uh, th- th- but there it turned is... up to like twenty. Oh my gosh! It's like and... super scary, Wendy. It's bog hag, Wendy. Yeah, this I is mean, fucking and... Witcher three. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we are we are one hundred percent in the crone zone. Yeah, with this, like, <laughs> I am scared of the makeup job they did on this woman. Yeah, I no, find this it's... woman terrifying in this it's... episode and the it... next episode. Yeah, we got some real large Marge kind of stuff going on with this. Where holy shit? Yeah, well, I mean, and and th- 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 there, there's a lot being done, not just with her makeup and. So I've, you know, I looked up pictures of her in other movies and stuff like she has a distinctive facial structure, but she is, she's allowed to be on a screen. So she's, she's not crawling with sores. Yeah. Like she is here. <laughs> or yeah. cackling. Like. The, 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 the camera is doing a long work because like it is just really lingering on her um, laughing. It is like this um, almost like a joy, like a joyless little kid cackle. Yeah. Uh, but with a vi- when I say joyless because the face isn't moving, like it's a little like I, it. Ugh. Yeah, I uh, think that the the stuff that happens to these characters is great. Mm-hmm. The idea behind this is that I hate these characters and it is effective. Yes, I fucking hate this couple. Uh, I hate what they did to their kid. I I would hate being around them. Like they're scary. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a uh, it's very effective. Yes to me but i hate uh, that the guy's name is spooge i fucking hate that dude <laughs> like, what are you doing calling yourself spooge come on man you could call i did i show you that there's like a bowie tribute thing coming to portland and one of the guys it's like we have adrian blue and i'm like cool adrian blue and there's a second guy i'd never heard of i was like all right and then there's a third guy whose name is fucking scrote no no then, I'm like man you could call yourself anything yeah. And you're going to call yourself Scrote. And then this thing is going to advertise and be like featuring Scrote. <laughs> and people are going to be like, I love to see Bowie with Scrote. <laughs> <laughs> Scrote does Bowie. Oh, fuck. Scrote does Bowie. Finally. <laughs> a, a duet of pleasures. <laughs> like I, I, I fucking hate it. I don't <laughs> like, No, no. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, 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 he got robbed. Um, no. but he only got robbed of a, uh, you know, of an ounce, an ounce. which we're going to, yep. we're going to figure out later. Uh, yep. right now, actually, because Walt meets up the Jesse in the desert, uh, to hand off the money and <laughs> Walt is real shitty about Jesse's new car. It's like new car. I'm guessing this one doesn't bounce. <laughs> yeah. He, he can still not put away his disgust. Yeah. You know, for Jesse, Jesse hands him $15,000 and, uh, Walt rides him about the missing thousand. They should both get $16,000. Right. Um, I love Jesse just being like, that's, we're making six grand a week. Yeah. You know, like, or like, is it six grand a day? It's something it's like, ridiculous. Yeah. They're clearing six grand a day. You know, yeah. it, it, it's just kind of automatically coming in. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's it just, and, and Jesse's just like, no, you know, one of my guys got held up, but don't worry about it. Skinny skinny Pete's good. Yeah. You know, it's fucking, it's breakage, you know, mm-hmm. what, it's, it's, it's what they have at like Kmart. Yeah. When, you know, it's just the p- part of the cost of doing business. You fucking idiot. Yeah. You and know? like, you, you, you gotta love Walt just complete disregard for the safety of Jesse's guy. Yeah. You know, just like, Oh, skinny Pete's good. Oh, well, go awesome. Skinny Pete's good. you know, what about, yeah. You know, he is immediately making it into a matter of pride. Um, yeah. And this is him getting involved in the business side again. Like this would not have gone <laughs> as wrong as it does if he wasn't, you know, corrupting and warping Jesse with his fucking pride. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. It, it's interesting. I don't know how correct he is when he says, um, if word gets out that people can just take your dealers, it's going to be open season on your skinny peats. Yes. Like that might be astute. Mm-hmm. You know, that might be insightful. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I'm inclined to trust Jesse on this one. It's yeah. not, it's probably the reason, like, it's not the reason why Tuco was a psychopath because Tuco is a psychopath, mm-hmm. but it, it, it is part of that drug dealing you know, culture. Like you don't let people get away with that. Yeah. It's, it's a problem that you're eventually going to have to solve if you're in the business long enough. Right. Yeah. Like, like somebody probably is going to get hurt or die. Jesse may be a little bit too blase about it. The fact that Walt has to resort to basically, you know, almost like making comments about Jesse's dick size to, to, yeah. to, to get him to do anything about it makes it seem, makes it feel like an inherently bad point on Walt's it's very, part. It's very manipulative. Yeah. Right. Like it, it's both like, it might be a good point, but he's making it in the worst possible fucking way. Yeah. You know, yeah. call, like call, call calling him lazy, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. like it seems to me like it's just you. You know, it's just you making a fool of yourself. You think Chuko had breakage? I guess he did. He broke bones. 
Yeah. Uh, very funny, uh, clumsy line. He did yeah. have breakage. Bone breakage. <laughs> like, okay, Laffy Taffy. You know? <laughs> like, um, okay, riddle me this, <laughs> Heisenberg. What kind of breakage does... Like, it's a really bad line, I think. Yeah, it's not uh, good. Jesse says, you, you want your fucking grand and throws that and Walt throws it back. Yeah. You know, Jesse says, what do we want me to do about this? Yeah. Uh, and these two characters egging each other on because they're mad about other stuff. Yes. Uh, continues. Like Skylar comes back. She microwaves herself a panini. <laughs> uh, Walt's like, oh, I thought we got rid of those because of the sodium. She's like, one's not going to hurt me. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, and they get, they start fighting yes. uh, here. This is very well observed. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the rhythms of this. Yeah. The, the, the way that like a conversation about other stuff just slides into a full on blow up because one person in the equation, in this case, Walt can't resist getting in his barb. Right. Well, he, this is the leverage he wants. Yes. Like this is, this is on the list of him going through and trying every t- key on the, the keychain, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what will unlock. He's like, he's tried, this is his version of the stick. Yeah. He's tried the carrot with like, I'm going to go to this, uh, you know, do these antioxidants, get back in that support group. That didn't work. Mm -hmm. He's now, he found a stick in the toilet. Yeah. You know, and he's like, I got a stick now. Mm -hmm. You know, he starts, he starts off soft when it doesn't work. He comes back with a cigarette pack. Like perhaps, you know, something about this, (laughs) you know, he fucking contradictions her. And she goes, no, I don't know anything about that. Or maybe I did smoke them like in a fugue state. You know, (laughs) fucking brutal. (laughs) Very good. I love it. Good, good play, Skylar. You yeah. know, he starts, how daring you, right? you know, uh, you know, abuse tactic and, you know, maximizing her crime and minimizing his. Yes. You know, you know, and, uh, and she's, and the smoking arc ends. Uh huh. You know, she's like, yeah, no, I only spoke three and a half and you'll be glad to know that. Yes, I am extremely ashamed. Right. Yeah. And uh, th- I mean, and this is devastating. You know, he says, but this is so unlike you. And she says, really? Well, how would you know? And then walks away like Uh, they have drifted this far apart. Awful. The next scene, uh, I'm going to de-interlace this a little bit because it's jumping ahead a little bit, but this is directly what leads to Walt going to Jesse's house. Yes. He, this, the, the sublimation train continues on the show when somebody has power expressed against them, they in turn go to express power against someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, he has no power over Skylar. Yes. This is, this is his thing. He does have power over Jesse. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's going to go, we're going to get another scene before this. Uh, that's a good scene and everything, but doesn't add up to tons. Yeah. Uh, the, the more plot important scene is Walt goes to Jesse's place, knocks on the door in the middle of the night and says, you've been, you asked me what I want you to do. He gives him the gun. So they want you to handle it. You know, yeah. uh, he's mad at Skylar. Mm-hmm. He's mad at himself. He's not mad at these meth heads. He's not mad at Jesse. Yeah. You know, he cannot appropriately channel his emotions. No, no. So it's he's a sad man. You know, uh, one of the many times (laughs) that Walt is going to be in the business of pressuring Jesse into killing people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, In between, we get a scene that I remembered having more consequence than it does. Mm -hmm. Like this ends up on rewatch. This feels like gilding the lily to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Hank wakes up because it sounds like there are gunshots from the garage, uh, gets his gun, comes out, uh, Marie walks out to see, and he pulls, swings his gun on her, which is a big deal. But what's really happening is Schrader brow is blowing up. Yes. You know, so it sounds like gunshots. Uh, this is, you know, as far as the best I can tell is this is just really underlining that he has PTSD. Yeah. That's all I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of clever, but also like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I don't think it is too much. He's, he's so he's so distracted by everything going on that he bottled it too soon, uh, which yeah. you don't want to do because you don't want it to over ferment in the bottle. And this is exactly what happens. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, this is what causes him the actual. Then we have the scene with Walt and Jesse. The last scene is him going down to the river and throwing Tuco's grill out into the river, the water. Yeah. Where it'll float yeah. down for the cold open. Yeah. He just he wants to be quit of it. Yep. Uh, he's, he's done with that shit. Uh, mm-hmm. he's not done with that shit. He's going to nope. have a way more traumatic things going to happen to him. in like, you know, next episode. Yeah. It's going to be pretty yeah. brutal. Actually. We, we've been ratcheting this, uh, this consequence up for two episodes of relative downtime and it's all going to explode next episode. Yeah. Uh, in an episode that I do not remember the Walt plot line at all. No, nope. I feel like it's all Jesse and Hank and it's great. Like it, it feels like it's, it's zooming out 
mm-hmm. to these these secondary characters and giving them highlights. Yeah, um, great uh, stuff. Uh, extremely good highlights. I mean, yeah. Peekaboo is uh, man, that just Jesse's whole great part episode. of it. Yeah, um, yeah. I cannot wait to talk about it. Um, on revisiting here, this episode's kind of corny a little bit. <laughs> it is. Yeah, agreed. Uh, the the hope throwing the hope in the garbage can. The did he have breakage? He had bone breakage. Uh, <laughs> like there is, there's a little corniness to it. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. It's as a pair with the last episode. I like what it sets up so much. Yeah, yeah. I think the last episode is better, even mm-hmm. though that's also kind of a corny episode that has like yeah. more comedy beats than I want there to mm-hmm. be. It's they. Uh, I like them seeing them. Like you, you think about uh, potential energy. Right. Like if we're going to sling these characters yeah. into the, the far reaches they're going to be, we have to pull them back. Yes. Enough. These two episodes do a good job of pulling them back. They're mm-hmm. just also not perfect episodes of television on their own. Yeah. I think. And in the grand scheme of the art form. Right. I mean, this, you know, Breaking Bad in particular, I think does downtime. I mean, you know, like they, they, they handle downtime a lot better than a lot of series would. Right. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they've, they've, they've got a good, they've, they've got a good instinct for simmer, right? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So yeah. Good episode. Not great, mm-hmm. but a, a season that I am appreciating more on this rewatch as the slow burn that it is. Yes. You know, like it gets a lot of negative attention for the airplane shit, uh, which I get, um, the moral event horizon that Walt crosses at the end of the season was the bridge too far for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually really like the pace of this season quite a bit. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, Thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Uh, what should people do if they like the show? People, if they want to support us, they can go to patreon.com slash duck TV, where uh, they can get a bunch of bonus content. Even at the mm-hmm. $3 tier, uh, there is a uh, welcome pack with, uh, I forget how many hours, but I think it's 20 something hours of free content. It's something <laughs> dumb. Yeah. Like it, it, it's a, it's, it's very generous uh, yeah. if we don't say so ourselves. Like yeah. some people get frustrated that we put anything behind a paywall. Uh, we do put a lot of fucking stuff though yeah. <laughs> behind it. So like it, it's, you know, yes, there's that fee, mm-hmm. but man, oh man, yeah. once you put in that fee, uh, you also get the joy of supporting uh, us. It's the only reason we can do these extra shows mm-hmm. is because of that support. Um, you know, without, we did the, we did duck feed stuff before we made any money on it, but like we couldn't do as much stuff mm-hmm. before that. Um, this lets the spigot keep going. Yeah. You know, so if that's, uh, if it's worth a buck 25 per you per week, to listen, uh, keep that spigot going. Yeah. And you know? thanks to everybody who has done that, al- done that already. Well, yeah. uh, ratings reviews on Apple podcast or podcast addict or anywhere you find podcast. Very, very appreciated. And big thanks to Gwen composer of the theme song and our producer who edited this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, until next time we're looking for a dust filter for a pressure pro Hoover extract max <laughs> vacuum King. No, there's more. Keep going. Uh, Lord Emperor of Suction, the carpet slayer, um, of the floor lands. Perfect. <laughs> like if you ask for that, you get something different <laughs> yeah. from the fixer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, every kind of vacuum filter can get, get you a different crime thing. <laughs> like I probably just ordered a dirty bomb. <laughs> You know, can't stop it now. It's on its way. Yeah, in a video game. <laughs>